So how can you tell which way the electrons are going to flow? In one reaction, the she was the cathode, the positive electrode gaining the electrons being reduced. And in the other reaction you just saw, the she was the anode, the negative electrode losing the electrons being oxidized. How can you tell which way the electrons are going to flow? Spontaneously, how do you know which direction is the thermodynamically favorable reaction? So let's say you made a copper zinc electrochemical cell where the overall spontaneous thermodynamically favorable reaction B where you have the element copper in solid form reacting with an aqueous solution of zinc to produce a copper ion solution and solid zinc. In that reaction, the copper is being oxidized, the zinc's getting reduced, or would the opposite happen? Would the copper solution react with solid zinc to produce elemental copper and a zinc ion solution? In that case, the zinc is getting oxidized and the copper is getting reduced. How do we know which direction to draw our arrow for where the electrons are going to, where they're coming from, and allow us to solve for the rest of that puzzle? What you're going to look at is that uh, downloaded file, that sheet of paper that you have in front of you called the Table of Reduction Potentials. In order to keep things consistent, that table was written in such a way that all of the reactions are written as reduction reactions. All of them were adding electrons to that particular substance. Uh, so if you have a copper ion, two electrons added to it, and the charge is brought down to neutral copper by itself. Or you have two hydrogen ions, two electrons being added to that to turn into that elemental hydrogen that's neutral. Uh, the list is written in such a way that the better oxidizing uh, agents are at the top of the list. Those are the ones that, uh, if you wanted to personify it a little bit, they prefer getting reduced. They do a good job at getting reduced. And the ones that have better reducing agent ability, they get oxidized better, are the ones that are at the bottom of the list. So zinc ion solutions uh, typically will not add electrons to it to turn into elemental zinc. And you can see the sign there is negative 0.76. You might be thinking, wait a second, I thought it was 0.76 a second ago. That was when the reaction was written as zinc getting oxidized. Now we're having it go the other way. So the sign is flipped on it as a result. So things that have those positive E cell values, that means that it has a, um, it's going to, it's working in the reaction direction that is expected. When you have that negative E cell value, that's uh, not as likely to happen. Doesn't mean it can't happen, it's just not as likely, relatively speaking. So you might see, here's just another example of uh, this, this list here of their reduction potential values and some reactions there off to the side. And then here's another list as well. Uh, this reaction, you might, you might remember uh, learning about the activity series from your sophomore year to help determine whether or not a reaction is going to occur or not. We were kind of doing this in a uh, relatively easier way to help you to decide which reactions are more likely to happen and which ones aren't. So when you look at the top of that list, the fluorine gas being added, uh, two electrons being added to it to reduce, has the highest E cell value on that list by a significant margin, 2.87, and the next highest number up there is 1.77. And the question there asks, why do you think that fluorine does such a good job of attracting electrons that it would have such a high positive E cell value. Uh, very thermodynamically favorable for that fluorine gas to turn into fluoride ions. So if you think about the trends that you've learned about in 
uh, chemistry. One of the reasons that it's so good at attracting electrons is it has a high electron affinity value. A lot of energy is released when those fluorine atoms, that fluorine molecule, turn into fluoride ions. Uh, another reason is that fluorine molecules have very small radii. And so that means that those incoming electrons that are being added to our molecule uh, can very easily feel that pull of the nucleus because the distance from the electrons to those fluorine atoms is very small. When the distance is small, attractive forces are big. And so fluorine does a really good job of attracting electrons and turning into fluoride ions. So how are we going to determine what the direction is of that spontaneous thermodynamically favorable product favored reaction? It gave us those two scenarios before between the copper and the zinc and asked us to decide which way it'll go. So what you're going to do is look at uh, your reduction potential list. And those spontaneous thermodynamically favorable reactions are going to occur between a reducing agent at the southeast corner and an oxidizing agent at the northwest corner. Right now you're probably thinking, what? Uh, you're going to connect the two substances that you're trying to react together with a line. If your line looks like that from the one below, where kind of starting at the, if that was a clock, uh, starting at like the 10 o'clock and going to the 4 uh, on a clock there. So that northwest, southeast direction. If the two chemicals that you're trying to, to connect together, if the line goes that way, uh, then you're going to have a spontaneous reaction between those two substances. If the line does not go in that northwest, southeast direction, then the reaction is not going to be spontaneous. So let's try it. With that zinc she reaction that we looked at earlier, the she was the cathode gaining the electrons. But how would you know that just by looking at a standard reduction potential chart? If you didn't have the drawing that showed you that the she was the one gaining the electrons, how would you know just by looking at the chart? You should see these two lines on your standard reduction potential chart, the one for the she and the one for the zinc ion turning into elemental zinc further down. So the zinc should be a reaction when you're looking at your reduction potential chart, but closer to the bottom for that zinc reaction. When we connect the hydrogen ion aqueous to solid zinc, we get this green line that you see there. What that means is that a thermodynamically favorable spontaneous reaction will happen between those two chemicals, between hydrogen ions and elemental zinc. The reaction will not happen spontaneously between hydrogen gas, the element, and zinc ions because that line goes in the wrong direction. So the spontaneous reaction happens between that solid zinc and aqueous hydrogen. So the spontaneous reaction would be solid zinc plus hydrogen ions turning into a zinc ion solution and hydrogen gas. So that green line that connects H plus and zinc solid, that tells us what our reactants are. And then we just have to finish what the reaction would be uh, between who's gaining the electrons, who's losing. So if you're starting with hydrogen ions, those hydrogen ions are going to gain electrons and turn into hydrogen gas. And your zinc is going to be the one that loses those electrons and be, turns into an ionic solution. The, re, the spontaneous reaction is not the other way around. It won't work spontaneously in the direction of if you try to bubble hydrogen gas into a zinc ion solution, it's not going to turn into elemental zinc and an aqueous hydrogen uh, solution. It's 
that reaction won't happen on its own. But what will happen on its own is if you put zinc in a hydrogen ion solution, it will on its own turn into a zinc ion solution and hydrogen gas. So for example, picture putting a piece of zinc into a hydrochloric acid solution. That zinc will turn into zinc chloride and then you'd get hydrogen gas being released. Uh, the reverse reaction wouldn't work. What about the copper and the she reaction? In that reaction, the she was the anode, losing the electrons. How would we know this? By looking at the standard reduction potential chart. What we're going to do is try and connect the chemicals together that we're trying to react, and we're going to see which one gives us that green line. Does it make the green line in the right direction? So this way, if we do copper ion solution with hydrogen gas, that's the correct direction of that north, west, south, east line. That's our spontaneous reaction, not the opposite direction. You cannot put copper in a hyd uh, hydrogen ion solution and get it to react spontaneously on its own. The spontaneous reaction happens on that green line between gaseous hydrogen and aqueous copper solution. That will go on its own. The opposite is not true. So for example, if you took a penny that's coated in copper, put that in a hydrochloric acid solution, nothing happens to it because as you can see in red there at the bottom, solid copper and hydrogen ions don't react with each other spontaneously. But you could go the other way around. You could bubble some hydrogen gas through a copper ion solution and it would start to create elemental copper and aqueous hydrogen ions.